Hey, this is Paul Payton with Focal Splash, and today I'm going to show you how to blur a background in Photoshop using the Tilt Shift filter. It's a fairly new filter in Photoshop, and it surpasses a lot of the other methods that people use to make a picture look like it was shot with an expensive lens. So here we have a, a photograph that was shot with a fairly expensive lens. <laughs> but the depth of field is, as you can see in the background, we have people back here and you can see all the way back there. So we know the depth of field is pretty broad. And uh, we're going to limit that depth of field with a tilt shift filter. So first of all, what we need to do is go ahead and make a selection. Uh, oftentimes you can make a selection of the background and then invert it. Uh, this time it looks like we're going to have to make a selection of the foreground of the subject <laughs> directly. Uh, it looks like that'll be the easiest way to do it. I just mentioned some people say use the pen tool and that sort of thing. Wow, uh, I'm just not that good. All right, so you get all your buddies who are better at this than me and they can show you how to use the pen tool. I can use the pen tool, but I just think this is a, a little easier and uh, it's, it's worked for me. So I start making my selection here, trying to only select the subject. It will sometimes select more than the subject with the quick select tool, uh, and then you just deselect that. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit and go ahead and get this backpack in here. We want that to be in focus and not randomly blurred. And I'll go ahead and make that smaller and paint this in. Oh, see? Got a little extra, we hold the Alt key down and just undo that. This is still a rough selection. We're going to go into s the new Select and Mask uh, in a moment, but uh, we'll go ahead and continue making this selection, deselecting this green part of the water, and reselecting this. And I suppose. All right, down here. It's a little less important because this part of the background, for instance, is going to be uh, pretty much in focus anyway. So if I didn't get the feet, it wouldn't matter. They're still going to be in focus anyway. But since we're making a selection, might as well, you know, might as well make a selection. I'll go halfway. There we go. And wow, even if we got that, that's going to stay in focus. So. All right, and we'll deselect um, just for fun, just in case it gets a little out of focus. We'll deselect in here. Why? Because it's the right thing to do. Let's see how that does. Yeah, it's pretty good. All right. And a little bit more, and then we'll go into Select and Mask. I'm holding the space bar down and then grabbing and moving. To zoom, I hold the Z key down and move sideways, and that works very well for me. There are other methods to move and pan and zoom, and that's what I, one of the great things about Photoshop is there's 10 ways to do just about anything. Now I'm going to go into the Select and Mask and finish off the selection right here. here. All right, and then we can see. Uh, with this up here, we I have chosen, and I like to use black, and then I switch over and use white, and then I switch over to onion skinning. And you can see onion skinning is really nice because you can change the opacity on it and see what you're missing. So, you know, if there was a part of my bag or something sticking out, I'd be able to go, oh, well, there, it's, you know, it's not there. So that's a really good method. All right, it's, we'll just zoom in a little bit, and we'll check the edges here, and see what we have like right here I'm gonna use the brush tool now I hit B for the brush tool and I made my brush something a little bit odd but uh, that's another lesson you can change your brush to anything you want just gonna paint this away and I'm gonna go ahead and paint my head in here oh I did a little bit too much my oh, I'm holding the alt key now there like that and I'm going to get rid of this line here. I'm just remove this line. Pen tool would come in real handy here. So some kind of Photoshop purist who says, you're not, you're not doing it right. Well, okay, not doing it right. 
oh no, he didn't use the pen tool when he should have. The police are going to come and <laughs> arrest me for not using the pen tool. And if I was going to use a pen tool, that'd be a whole different lesson. So I'm going to speed this up probably and just finish this off. And then we'll switch to white and we'll just see if there's anything that the black was hiding. Like this. All right, I'm gonna say for my purposes, that's a good selection. So next I'm gonna do is just make it into a selection and hit okay. All right, so we have a selection. I like to go ahead and make a uh, bring it up on the next layer. I can use that to uh, make a selection again just by click control clicking on it. So I have that. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and make a selection on it right now. I'm going to hit control J, preserve our background. We're going to give this selection again by hitting com command and tapping there. And then with this layer selected, control shift I will make the whole background the selection and this not selected. You could also go to select and inverse if that's what you want to do. Uh, and then now that that's selected, we have that top layer turned off. This is the only layer that we can see here. And I'm going to go to filter, blur gallery, tilt shift blur. Just so we can see the blur, I'm going to bump it up so we can see what's going to be blurred drag this down my feet because that's the spot that I want to say this should be perfectly in focus um, and everything straight up standing up from that spot should be perfectly in focus and there's really not much there uh, so then this this here says when the blur should start and this also says when that blur should start so I could bring this all the way up and that's just gonna blur like this very front section some let's Let's turn that blur back up. See, we'll blur the front a little bit. It's just a little unrealistic from this distance, but I'm going to leave that so that it just blurs the edge there. And then this says where the, where the blur should start, and then there's a gradient. And this gradient here should end up somewhere near the horizon. So that, wherever the horizon would be, right? so that it's a gradient blur which is what the a camera would produce and then this is all blurred the same because it should be the same distance and so we'll bring the blur down because we want it to be believable all right and with this method the other methods we used to have to cut this out or all kinds of things but with this method um, you don't have to cut it out it's not causing a halo or anything like uh, like other method methods used to and yeah we could make it as blurry as we want there's other things to the you know the distortion which is like lens distortion and then um, light bokeh so if you like that bokeh effect it wouldn't work in this situation but you know if it's a darker scene back there and there's lights and we can add color to the bokeh. You know, these are all effects that you want to look into if they're going to be effective in your composition. But in the woods here, we're just really not going to see bokeh globes like that. So here we have it. I'm going to go ahead and, and hit OK on this. And it's going to process. All right. And then we have the before and after. The before and after. A lot of people like that, and in certain compositions, it works very well. There's the before, and there's the after. All right, thanks for watching. Please leave some comments. Uh, like the video. Uh, like the Facebook post that the video is connected to. Comment there. Uh, I want to know if there's something about the video, there's something about me, uh, there's, <laughs> there's something about the way I did something, uh, anything, any complaints, any uh, any comments at all, I'm I'm willing to accept them, and and uh, I will apply anything that I think any changes I think I need to make to the way I do things. I'm just looking for somebody to tell me what I'm doing wrong so I can do it right. 
if you'd like I'd, I'd really appreciate if you subscribe to this channel so that when I make another video uh, you'll be able to see them and then you can just decide whether you want to watch them or not thanks a lot for watching have a good day